Welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck. Instead of seeing my ugly mug, I thought these are much better to look at. Strawberries, or frauli in Maltese, are in season, and we just had our strawberry festival. They come into season twice, actually, in Malta, and some of these are absolutely massive. They're so sweet and beautiful and um, fragrant. So I thought, before the, <laughs> these go bad on me, I'm going to take advantage of the bounty that we have here. And today, what I'm going to be making is torta tel frauli. And what that is, is a strawberry pie. More specifically, a strawberry ricotta pie. So guys, we're in my kitchen already. Sit back, relax, and let's get started on torta tel frauli. <laughs> Okay guys, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've washed and trimmed my strawberries and started chopping them and adding them to this bowl. Don't they look beautiful? They're so ruby red. My cutting board <laughs> looks like I've been slaughtering. <clears throat> Excuse me. It looks like I've been slaughtering meat or something, but it's the lovely juices. Look at this big guy. So. I'm just slicing my strawberries, my frauli in pieces and I'm adding them to my bowl. Over here I have um, some that I'm saving for garnish when everything is ready. Guys, I know I normally show you all of the ingredients at once, <clears throat> but this is so easy. Just follow along, jot it down as we go, or you can refer to the video anytime. Right, so my strawberries are done. Next up is to add the ricotta and eggs and I'll show you what that looks like. Be right hey back. guys, all right, so I'm ready to start adding to my strawberries. First thing I'm gonna do is add sugar. Now, I'm gonna add a cup. And just over a half to start with because I'm going to taste this. I know that there's going to be raw eggs in it, but the eggs that we uh, make today are safer. And if you have a problem with that, then don't do it. So I'm going to go ahead and add three eggs. So they're all in. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my ricotta. Now I have two tubs of 250 grams of ricotta cheese. If this filling makes more than I need, I'm not going to be worried about it because I can just make another one or a small one. So, so there. Okay, the first one's in. The second one's in. Add a mash about. Mix those eggs in there a bit. Right, so they're in. I'm going to add about a, t a teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm going to add a dash about a teaspoon, let's say, of vanilla. That's going to add a nice flavor to it. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and start mixing this in. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. So I'm going to continue mixing my filling. And, to, and you're going to see it's going to take on a beautiful pinkish purple color. And when this is all done, I'll bring you all back. Hey gang, welcome back. So as you can see, my batter, my filling, is pretty much done. I switched to a whisk just to do the best I can. Um, don't worry, the strawberries, if some of them get mashed, it doesn't matter because they're going to cook anyway. And um, 
I did taste this and there was enough sugar, didn't need any more. Um, so what I'm going to do now is pop this in the fridge um, just to set, get a little cool on me and I'm going to start on the crust. Guys, it's almost done. It's that simple. The crust is really simple. I'm not doing a pastry. What I have here is some digestive cookies and I found some that had a strawberry filling. Um, if you cannot, that's fine. You can use graham cracker. You, um, you can use regular digestive cookies. You can use Oreo cookies. That would be really good in this. And that was what I was initially going to do, but then um, I saw these. Um, so you get my point. Use what you want for the bottom. So what you're going to do with this is we're going to first crush these up. You can put them in a food processor or in a baggie and use a rolling pin and crush them up. Guys, you know how to do that. <laughs> You've seen it before. It's really easy. So I'll bring you back and show you when these are all crushed up and we're going to add some melted butter to it to make our crust. All right, guys. See you in a bit. Crushing, cracking, rolling. Get those crumbs of crushing. Hey gang, so I've gone ahead and crushed my um, digestive biscuits um, with, with the filling as best as I could. And don't worry if it's not, you know, perfect. If you have a food process, processor, um, it'll come out better. I don't. So if anyone wants to send me one, that would be really, really nice. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, I've, um, it's all by hand. So, it's in this bowl. And I'm just going through it with my fork. And I'm trying to get some more. Without totally making a mess. <laughs> I'm just trying to get um, some more of the pieces crushed as I can. Like I said, guys, if you have a food processor, this would, you know, be much more fine. I do have a handheld stick blender. Unfortunately, I had to lay it to rest. Yeah, I got a lot of use out of it, but it just burnt out on me and it's done. So I just had to, just today actually, throw it away. So I'm going to have to invest in another one. Right. So I'm not going to fuss around with this too much more. Over here, I have some melted butter and I'm going to add that in. I have about three tablespoons and I'm going to add this slowly. And I, I'm looking for like a sand kind of texture. <clears throat> well, it smells so yummy. Oh my gosh. Guys, in my um, filling batter, I did actually off camera add about a quarter teaspoon of salt, which I forgot to mention. You're wanting this to be able to pack down. I'm just going to put just a smidge more. And I think that's it. So maybe two tablespoons, two and a bit. Making more of a mess than I think. Mm. Gotta love melted butter. Okay, so that smells really, really good. And it's got the consistency I want it to be at. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this, or put place this, rather, into my pie shell. Don't judge me on my manky-looking Pyrex pie shell, but these things are so hard to unstain. I mean, it's clean. It's very clean. I've cleaned it and cleaned it and scrubbed it. But with Pyrex dishes, often things get baked into the glass, and I know there's ways to remove it. Whatever, it's all good. 
So, that's in my pie dish. I'm going to grab a spoon and I'm going to start moving this around because we want this flattened out. Maybe it's a little more moist than I should have made, but oh well. It'll work. So guys, I'm going to continue with this. And what I often use, actually, is the bottom of my um, cup measurement and flatten it out that way. So I'm going to continue with this and I'll bring you back when it's all smooth and covered the, the pie uh, dish. Sometimes the best tools you have are the hands that God gave you and that's what I use to press down most of this pie shell with. I'm just going through it now um, with my measuring cup just to smooth it out a bit. Guys, no one's going to see this because it's going to be covered in the um, filling. So I'm happy with that. I'm not going to fuss too much. Guys, this is homemade cooking. It's not, you're not a bakery shop. And the crust does not have to come all the way up. Like most cheesecakes, um, you want to leave a little bit um, and unexposed um, so the filling can be exposed basically is what I'm trying to say. So guys what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop this into an oven at 200 Celsius for about five minutes or so just to get this set. I don't want it to cook completely I just want it to set a bit before I put my filling in and then when that comes out I'll see you then. Alright guys I put my crust in the oven for about yeah, five or so minutes just to get it set. It's not completely cooked as I said um, But it's much more firm and it smells really good So at this point I've taken my mixture out of the fridge and I'm going to go ahead and add it to my pie shell so Let's go ahead and do that carefully. And look at that. Well, pretty much all of it, basically. <laughs> so I didn't have too much. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the oven at 200 Celsius. Um, Preheat your oven, by the way. I'm going to put this in at 200 Celsius until it's set. And when that happens, I'll bring you all back. Pray for me. <laughs> all right, guys. See you in a bit. All right, guys. So my pie is out of the oven. Um, it took about an hour or so. Um, <clears throat> it does run the risk of sinking on you. And that's normal. Um, it smells absolutely incredible. I did um, have to put some tin foil on top um, because I didn't want it to get too brown, but I wanted it to cook. Now, like a cheesecake, it should be slightly, slightly jiggly in the middle. But as it cools, it's going to set. All right. So I'm going to let this entirely cool completely before I do the last edition of this pie. And then it's going to go into the fridge for a bit. But guys, you really need to let this cool. So I'm going to let this cool. It's so tempting because it smells so freaking amazing of strawberry. But um, Gonna let it cool and then I'll bring you all back. Hey guys, so welcome back to the countertop. So I've finished my torta tal fraoli. I've added some icing sugar on top. Um, I don't have a, a little sifter thing, sorry. Um, I used a, a small colander. 
Um, but I've decorated it with some strawberries, as you can see. And it's cool, but the bottom is still a little warm. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I really, really hope that you try this. It smells absolutely amazing. And guys, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't. It takes seconds. I love your comments. Please give me a thumbs up if you love this video. And we'll see you next time on Memories of Malta here on the Euro Cooking Connect. As usual, there will be a few photos at the end. Alright guys, ciao.